heel. As a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, way back, back, way back. into the light. Into the light. Into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's just game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Individual, 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 individual. Ideas are bulletproof. And we're finding out exactly how bulletproof they are every day. Standing up to tyranny worldwide, people are getting tired of it and saying, enough is enough. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is September 30th, 2011. This is Down the Rabbit Hole, and I'm your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com. Today, I am joined by my good friend, researcher, professor... An all-around nice guy, Jim Fetzer. Jim, say hello to the audience. <laughs> Popeye, thanks for having me on. Not, not everyone would agree to your characterization. No, I know. Some people would call you kooky or, or nutty or they'd pick on you or whatever. But, see, uh, mostly those are the same people that would probably call me a conspiracy theorist or a kook or a nut. So I guess we're in the same boat. So really, <laughs> their opinions don't mean much to me. I mean, well, there seem, when, there uh, seem to be, yeah, there seem to be a lot of uh, how do I characterize them out there who, uh, you know, still believe in the, the official account of nine eleven or want to defeat those of us who are doing our best to expose morons. Them. Yeah. Morons. <laughs> morons is how I would I would. Morons. That's what I would well, label them. Fair enough. Speaking of morons, you were on the uh, BBC network uh, recently, and uh, yeah, one of the—I yeah. think it was, was it a radio show? Was yeah. it a radio show or did, did, was it video? Worldwide live, worldwide live. Yeah, I, Popeye. Jim sent me the MP3, and it was they. First of all, they were rude. I mean, talk, I mean, the Brits can be even. Yeah. I mean, they they have. They have a way of being rude about them, and I, I don't want to say that the producer. He was a nice guy when he spoke to you on the phone because I heard you, you know, coming in and out. But the way the guests, you know, they left the microphones un, unmuted. Uh, you know, they had open hot mics so that while Jim's talking, ladies and gentlemen, he's trying to explain because they're all, of course, everybody on the on the program, but Jim was, you know, the official story of nine eleven is is what happened. 
And when they were talking about Ahmadinejad and what he brought up about how 9-11 was an inside job, and Jim was the only person defending it, and they had some little schmuck in the background laughing and giggling while Jim is trying to talk. Now, I noticed that they didn't give that kind of disrespect to anybody else on the panel, and then they go to a commercial, and that was it. <laughs> they got rid well, of you, Jim. Uh, you, were- you know, I think the thing was, uh, was an arranged event, uh, but it didn't go quite according to Hoyle. I mean, the hostess, Philippa Thomas, had actually called me in the morning, and, 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 and we had uh, talked. I'd explained to her my views about all this, so she actually knew enough to know where I was coming from. So I think I was the token representative from the 9-11 truth movement. Are you going to play the play the clip at some point, Popeye? I mean, then, then we could talk about it with greater you know, understanding. Yeah, by I'm, the gonna, I'm, I, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but what I'll do is when we come back um, into, in the second segment, I'm going to play uh, the end, especially the part where you were talking, and I'm going to let the listeners hear for themselves how you, oh. you, know, you were talking, and this little punk yeah. is snickering while you're trying to talk and then you know he comes on with this this aura of he's better than you and that you're some some bumbling idiot you know wherever that doesn't know what he's talking about and that you know the whole thing the whole thing actually yeah the whole thing in its totality is pretty interesting because they begin by the um the, the, this assistant to the you know the host or the producer telling me that uh, it's a very informal program, very conversational, and that if I have a point I want to make, I shouldn't hesitate to go ahead and make it. Uh, I heard that he did say that he said that he, don't do not hesitate he, to interrupt them. Don't feel you have to wait for them to ask you anything. But actually, Pop, I when I got on, I mean, it appeared to me that Philippa Thomas, who was the hostess, actually was rather formal. And like to delegate, you know, certain blocks of time to each of her guests. I guess, I think there were four of us on there that first part. Uh, there was a professor from Boston University. There was a, a some professor from Iran. There was this guy, Richard, you're talking about, who was in New York, who was identified as someone who blogs on, I don't know, politics and foreign affairs. And then there was me. And... Uh, you know, what's really remarkable about it, uh, actually, Popeye, is uh, that I got out so many important parts. I mean, th- you know, this was live, so they couldn't edit it. And it was worldwide. So, you know, really, uh, I got out a lot of important points about the towers. I mean, the first point I made was why, you know, he, he, the president of Iran is right and his critics are wrong and that anyone can tell the government's been lying about 9-11 if they just look at videos of the destruction of the Twin Towers because according to the official account, it was done by gravity and gravity is a downward force, a unidirectional downward force but yet the buildings are blowing up in every direction which is a consequence of explosives so what they're seeing is something that could not be done by gravity but had to have been done by explosives and anyone can just look and tell therefore on that basis alone that the government's been lying to us and that was probably but the most Jim, important point I that, made that would, require, that would require that physics and science weren't altered on that one and one day only, I may add, because since then, I haven't seen insurance companies or anybody be worried about building code. I mean, if this were really the case where buildings could come down the way they did and turn it where steel can get turned into microparticulate matter that can float through the air like dust, okay, well then, I guess we need to go look over all of our building codes everywhere, all over the world, not just in the U.S., but all over the world, because apparently... A simple room and contents fire. Okay, yes, there was jet fuel, but most of the jet fuel burned up. Okay, so what was left? There might have been some some you know jet fuel maybe inside the the you know a couple of the floors itself, but most of the stuff that was burning after a while because that jet fuel would have yeah. burned off rather quickly. So what was burning? What was left was room and contents. So that's what you that's what a that's firefighter right. you know in, in the firefighting that's industry right. be known as a room and contents fire. And that is that's not. Right. I can tell you from six years of firefighting, that's not enough. There's nowhere near enough energy or f- physical force or even – it just doesn't make sense. It just it just does not make well, sense well, at all. When well, you put it to science, it doesn't make any sense, Jim. Well, even NIST studied 236 samples of the steel Popeye and determined that 233 
had not been exposed to temperatures above 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a temperature of an ordinary office fire, and the other three not above 1,200 degrees, well, Underwriters Laboratory had certified the steel to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit for three to four hours without any damage, so the fires were not burning hot enough. And in the South Tower, they only burned for about an hour, and in the North, about an hour and a half. So you're right. Yeah, well, see, that's the, that's the key point right there. We're, you're going to get cut off by the break. You're going to get cut off by the break, Jim, so hang on. But that's the key point, listeners. The second tower fell before the first tower, and the first tower was hit first. So if fire would have weakened the steel, the first tower should have gone down first. Think about that. We're going to the break. We'll be right back. Now I've realized that Uncle Sam was not befriending me. He was only using me to be friends with the enemy. A presidential terrorist. Ain't that a contradiction? I guess it goes to show the truth. It's stranger to fix it. But they don't even show the truth. We are back. We're hanging out with Jim Fetzer today. September 30th, 2011. Jim just got railroaded, as I would call it. I'm going to put the video. Uh, I got to render it, but I'm going to put a video, a uh, quick little video uh, with the, the full um, interview up on my full length channel on YouTube. The answer to 1984 is all one word. The answer to 1984 is. And you'll be able to hear the entire interview. And I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to put. I'm going to put up the entire MP3 with, uh, or the entire video with the MP3 that Jim sent me, so you can hear what they said to Jim beforehand and afterwards. Because they, like Jim said, you hear them say, "Jim, feel free to jump in whenever you want." And then after Jim's dropping truth bombs for like 30 minutes, they go to a commercial break, and Jim's sitting there, and he, and all of a sudden the producer comes up and he's like, "Jim." Jim, Jim, thank you so much for coming on. And Jim's like, it's over. I, I, it, um, that's it. Like, we're done. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, we're taking it in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you know, okay. Popeye. During that thirty minutes, I got in so many important points. I mean, not only about the how you can look at the videos and tell the government's been lying. Because it's being it's it's blowing apart from the top down, which requires explosives. It's not simply dropping to the ground, as in the case of gravity. I I also explained there were those explosions in the sub basements, you know, 14 and 17 seconds prior to the reverberations from uh, the alleged plane strikes. I pointed out that the flight 11 and 77 weren't even scheduled to fly that day, and that the other two, according to FAA registration data were still in the air four years later and uh you know that elias davidson had shown the government's never been able to prove any of the hijackers were aboard any of the planes and david ray griffin that the all the phone calls from those flights were faked and and i also uh, well those were the oh yeah osama bin laden i explained how this whole thing was phony you know how osama bin laden had denied he had anything to do with it and that uh it was contrary to the well, tenets see, of Islam. The Dropping too much truth and too sh you info jam them. I mean, you when you when you guys hear the interview, <clears throat> Jim really was just dropping truth bombs left and right. And I could, as I was listening to it, I was snickering because I'm thinking to myself, the producer from the BBC must have been screaming in that chick's ear. <laughs> I know. Shut, Shut him up! Shut, Shut him up! Yes. I know. Just, you know, and I was snickering listening to it. I mean, <laughs> it was the only good thing that I, I knew that they were freaking out, and that's why they were treating you like crap. I mean, as your friend, I, I you know, I, I get a, I get a little pissed off because I don't See, like people. I don't like. I, first of all, I just think it's disrespectful. I mean, even if you weren't my friend, Jim, it's disrespectful to treat any researcher, anybody you bring on your show, like. I would love to have somebody like I would love. I'm trying to get a couple debates going with people that don't agree with anything about the truth movement at all. Yeah. Some of them just don't come on they're, they're Most of them don't want to come on. They don't want to. They don't yeah. want to debate. They and they're, they're It's always the same thing. Oh, you'll attack me. No, I wouldn't. I would be ultimately professional. I would put the BBC to shame because look how they treated you. I mean, open mics, well, letting other people snicker at you. That's not the way you're supposed it, to do it, things. It, but it, they yeah, do but that. Probably, to, you you, you yeah. got to look at. You got to look at it the other way around. The, the, the BBC is part of the operation to keep the truth from the American people. I mean, having me on, I think they would probably conclude it had been a blunder because I got so much out there in that little time. So that, you know, I think in a way I was snookering them. I mean, the fact that they let this guy giggle didn't bother me. I mean, it was a slightly 
disconcerting, and I agree you could... Con- oh, no, I know it didn't bother you. You just kept going on, and, I mean, you handled yourself really well, but the the fact is they... They allow you, you know, and then after, if if any, when people listen to it, I know someone's going to say, well, Popeye, Jim was going, pff, pff. yeah, after he was getting laughed at, then, and this guy was trying to refute him. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, Jim was polite about it. I would have torn this guy a new ass right on the BB. They would have hung up on me. I would have right on the BBC. You would have heard me start going off on him. Okay. Well, it's a tricky so Jim thing. Was, yeah. was professionalism. <laughs> I wouldn't have been Popeye. so polite about it. Yeah. Well, it's tricky because, you know, you want to maintain your poise and get across as much as you can get across in however much time they allow you. I mean, I wasn't at all surprised that they didn't bring me back for the second segment. I mean, the surprising part was that I was on for the first. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when the guy comes on at the end, and I'll, I'll play it in a little bit because we got two hours, guys. So, yeah, I'll be able to play it for you. But it's funny because you're all quiet and you're like, um, hello. And he's like, hey, hey, Jim. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Th- thanks for coming on. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, that's it. Are we done? And you can kind of hear in your voice that you kind of half expected them. Yeah. I was surprised yeah. to just give you a click and hang up on you. But do you expect yeah. anything less from the PC? I mean, they had that, that stuff they did with you guys, uh, you and Jones, right before 9-11, that they had that moron um, – Charlie Bitch or Charlie Veach, whatever his little name is, he was running around and he with a bunch of other conspiracy theorists. They had the 9-11 road trip. Then he comes back and all of a sudden he has an epiphany and says 9-11 isn't an inside job anymore. I mean, the, B- the BBC's a joke. Look at 9-11. Well, Look what they did. See, see you got you, you to gotta realize that I have, you know, published a piece exposing their conspiracy files, uh, uh, you know, cover-ups. Uh, which you can find, you know, on Veterans Today at uh, the BBC's instrument of 9-11 misinformation. The BBC's instrument of 9-11 misinformation, where I take apart their latest hit piece called 9-11, 10 years on, and explain how they were very subtle about it. They, they came here this time, Popeye, and interviewed me for four hours. They had come three years before and interviewed me for eight and on that, based on that first one, they'd use seven and a half minutes, and then four minutes of Alex Jones and three and a half of Dylan Avery. Uh, this time they featured the, the three of us again, uh, but also Niels Herrett, who's one of the hard science group, you know, has been promoting nanothermite as the key to understanding what happened on 9-11. So, you know, I had the opportunity to really take them apart because what I discovered when I watched this show was I'd be talking about one photograph, the hit point, or the clear lawn, and they'd show a photograph of a, another location that has sometimes been misdescribed as the hit point, and they'd show a lawn with debris on it. And then when I explained, you know, where did that all debris come from? Because it would have been too awkward to have officers and enlisted men carry it out onto the lawn. And I have conjectured that it may have been dropped from the C-130 that was uh, circling the building. They interviewed the pilot who said he was offended that anyone would suggest that he could have been involved in this. They were Are just, you there? They were ridiculous. With, with the, I, I, I was, while you were talking, I was going back and listening to the, the interview again at the yeah, same time yeah, in, in yeah. my other ear. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. it's just ridiculous with, dude, it, it's almost like, Jim, it almost sounds like somebody was holding a script in front of the guy, uh, not the guy from Boston, the other guy. The guy in New York? Supposedly the from Richard? To- the Richard. <clears throat> no, no, not him either. The other dude, the, the guy from the Middle East. Oh, the guy in Iran. Yeah. Well, he was, being Iran very cautious. He, was. He, he was being very cautious. He was saying, however... You know, that he- Jim, I swear to God, it sounds like somebody was holding a script in front of him, and he knew exactly what he could say and what he couldn't say. He didn't go over a line saying Ahmadinejad's a nutbag because he would have probably been hanging from a... You know, a yard arm. Well, but at the same time, he did denounce you know, that he was wrong and this and that. And, and they try to tie it in. They, then they tie it into that whole Al Qaeda got mad at him for, for, for saying. And they, they try to bring that up like that's a real relative thing. It, so the CIA got mad that Ahmadinejad yeah. said 9 11 was an inside job. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, sure? that's the way you have to look well, at he it. Was actually, he was saying, too, that conspiracy theories are growing. You know, I mean, uh, that actually oh yeah, he said out. that. And, but see, be, you see how they pinned it on the Middle East, though. 
You see how they they try to make it sound like it's a it, it, oh conspiracy theories. You know they they abound in the Middle East. Like like they emanate only from the Middle East. You know like it's Arabs that are going. Yeah, the the Federal Reserve's bad, America. You guys should wake up. Yeah, because they knew about the Federal Reserve people. Right. It's all BS, propaganda, bullcrap. We're going to break. We'll be right back. They killed my entire family, murdered and tortured, raped and pillaged. I was only five and I was the only survivor witness. My entire village burned to the ground. He wore a serpent in his crown. Happily committed murder with a frown and an army. back guys i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna take a couple seconds to deviate off of what jim and i've been talking about for a second because somebody in the chat room asked a question we're gonna answer that and then uh i'm gonna play something uh, i'm gonna touch on something really quick for you and then what i want to do is i'm gonna spend some time playing a couple you know a couple minutes of jim's interview and then we can sit <clears throat> and i want to listen to a clip of it uh, you know a couple clips i want to play the beginning part for you uh, where, you know, we're, as he's coming in and you can hear how, the, you know, pretty much what they said so that it, it's not just me and him talking. And then, uh, you know, uh, I'll play a couple minutes of it and then we can tear it apart and everything else. But somebody in the chat room asked what Jim and I thought of the Wall Street protest and Occupy Wall Street. Um, personally, myself, I think uh, it's a good idea. I think anytime you protest and show dissent, against authority it's a good idea like thomas jefferson said there should be a revolution every 20 years and you know and whether it's right you know you don't need to have a bloody one you're just a revolution of minds you know new way of thinking you know or or opening up your mind to a broader way of thinking not being so close-minded and narrow-minded but uh overall i think it's a good idea i don't agree with all the socialist groups that are down there I don't believe with the idiots that are running around saying capitalism needs to die. Mutant capitalism, the stuff John Perkins talks about, that needs to go. But not the um, not real capitalism, not you know some poor guy who starts off with nothing and you know twenty years later the guy's a uh, self-made millionaire. I, I I think that's awesome. Capitalism made this country what it is today. It's this mutant crony you know, evil capitalism where corporations are gods. And that's not even capitalism. That's just the way these guys think. I mean, I, it, I'm trying to get Perkins on as a guest. He's jam-packed, so it's probably going to be sometime in, like, November. But I suggest you guys read his, his books. And one of his best ones, his newest one, is Hoodwinked, and he explains a lot about this. Now, I don't agree with everything Perkins says. He doesn't think that there's – he doesn't call it uh, – he doesn't look at it from a conspiratorial view, as he puts it. But <clears> – <throat> If you get if you look up the definition of conspiracy and you see that it means two or more people getting together to plotting to do something bad, obviously banks plotting to screw the citizens of the country or the world would be a conspiracy to do that. But I, I, I won't I won't argue semantics at, at this point. The point is it's not regular capitalism that is bad. It's this mutant form of it. I don't agree with communism or socialism or or, or complete anarchy, but I do agree. I think it's good that all these groups are coming together from all different avenues because they can all agree on one thing: that Wall Street is evil and corrupt, and these people need to be held accountable. And some of them, like Jamie Dimon and all these others, need to swing. And it's as simple as that. Jim, what's your take on Occupy Wall Street? Well, I think it's a good thing too. Pop, I, though I might, you know, offer a different critique. I mean, I think the kind of capitalism you're describing is by and large mythical, you know, the self-made millionaire. I mean, it ca happens on rare occasions, but it's certainly not the common occurrence. And, and today, what we have is crony capitalism or, you know, th th there's a process of socializing costs and privatizing profits. So that there's uh, corporate capitalism is very much the way of life today in the United States where the government gives all kinds of tax breaks and subsidies to some of the biggest and most profitable corporations in the world, which is simply absurd. 
Uh, so I think that's the sort of thing that the protesters are ob objecting to. I mean, the government ought to be benefiting the people, not the corporations. And some of the decisions that have been made by the Supreme Court are simply stupefying all things considered, including the idea that corporations have the same rights as persons, and also that corporations can, uh, can make unlimited expenditures in elections, which seem to me to be antithetical. I mean, if corporations are persons, then they should have to subscribe to the same or be uh, controlled by the same limitations on contributions made by persons as are persons. So that the subsequent decision that corporations can have unlimited spending, you know, uh, is simply absurd given the history of their decisions. Neither is justifiable. These are both wrong decisions. But they certainly, it seems to me, taken together, exemplify the incoherence of the Supreme Court at present. I mean, I, I don't know if history will ever show that we have had a worse, a, least co a less competent Supreme Court than we have today. But it's certainly astounding that these uh, five right-wingers who control the court are making some incredibly stupid decisions that are, sir, stand as very poor precedents for the future. And uh, Rob in the chat room makes a good point. He said, you know, uh, okay, this is a theory, but I think this thing started as controlled opposition, meaning the, the uh, Occupy Wall Street. And judging based on the groups that were the first ones to show up, and I'm not saying all of them, but the majority of the people that showed up being anarchists and socialists and stuff, it wouldn't surprise me if those groups were steered. I mean, uh, I, I would say that if probably 50% of the people that, 50% of the quote-unquote resistance, no matter what it is across the board, is probably co-opted or infiltrated. Well well, you got to realize fake. there's so much corruption on Wall Street, you know. I mean, and the bailouts were so devastating to the American people, and the middle class is being gutted. I think anyone who's down there taking a principled stand, you know, against these, these uh, uh, monsters who really are heartless, brutal, and greedy. Greed is their middle name, Popeye. These people are greedy from the top of their to their heads to the bottom of their feet. I mean, th these are really, by and large, contemptible people who exploit their power to benefit themselves by making themselves even more rich. I mean, I I I've said I it before. Never, these are the kind of people, Jim, that would climb over their dying mother to f yeah. their sister. Yeah. Well. That's exactly For the type of people they are. They know, wouldn't think, think twice so about much, hitting you. I don't think they're so much driven by sex as they are by money. You know, it's just money and power. No, but I mean, it's, what I mean is, it's a, it's a, you know, that's the kind of, the, it's an old school statement. It, yeah. You know, it's like, a, yeah. but it, I what it, it, it yeah. yeah. What I mean by it, just in case the listeners aren't sure, what I mean by it is, these, are, that's the type of attitude these people have. They don't care. I mean, yeah. they, they think twice about doing something to you I mean, look how they act there's video with them there's a restaurant right around the corner from wall street <clears throat> and as the protesters were going by and the only people that you know go pretty much that can afford to go in this restaurant obviously are you know well-to-do people and most of them are you know a lot of people from wall street and stuff well, apparently they were they were out in the balconies and they started like drinking glasses of champagne and you know laughing and pointing and taking pictures of the protesters as they were going by and people took video of it and you can see these are all well-to-do people that have money you know sure. and they don't care it just it's amazing well, the disconnect and then when you try to tell people stuff about 9-11 oh well, these these people wouldn't do that to us are you kidding look how they treat protesters walking by they they drink champagne and laugh at them and take photos and point at them with their cell you know and take photos with their cell phones and ha 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 look at the stupid petty cheap you know poor protester ha 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 drink your champagne ha i mean that's the kind of attitude these people have they really don't care about us. So, yeah, they would kill 3,000 of our own citizens to start some, you know, crap somewhere else in, in, another, in another part of the world. To start well, some if you take a good super... look at some of these people, yeah, like Dick Cheney, who may be the most evil person to occupy a high position in American history, and Donald Rumsfeld, who's a close second, and Paul Wolfowitz, and Donald Fife, and Richard Pearl, and... Uh, you know, General Richard Myers, who just seems to me to be as squishy as a sponge and be willing to do anything for everybody just to, 
No backbone, no backbone at all. And then you get, you know, charlatans like Rudy Giuliani and Larry Silverstein, and then they're friends of the Mossad. I mean, this was a, uh, there's a lot going on here. I, I must mention a, a couple pieces uh, I've recently published on Veterans Today, what is entitled uh, Peeling the 9 11 Onion Layers of Plots Within Plots where I and, a, and an expert on co covert ops by the name of Preston James go through the multiple layers of patsies that have been trotted out, beginning with the Palestinians, believe it or not. While the Twin Towers were still smoking, a, an image of Palestinians rejoicing was flashed on the screen. And that had to have been planned in advance because it wasn't current event. The Palestinians were speechless like the rest of the world. It was drugged out of the dragged out of the archives to create the impression they were taking pleasure in our no, in wagging our the dog. Dream. They they do that kind of stuff in Libya too. They they were playing footage from a uh, an Indian soccer match or whatever, and all the there's like a couple thousand fans, and they all have Indian flags, and they were like, oh look, it's live from Tripoli on the BBC yeah. of of all places. Sure. So it doesn't sure. surprise me at all. We're gonna get cut off by the break. We'll be right back. Listeners, stay tuned. Three minutes. During the break, I was talking to Jim, and I was telling him about the... Uh, a little bit more about the wagging the dog episode in Libya with the BBC. And it just goes to show you, I mean, they get caught lying time and time again. And I was telling him about ITV. Now, I'll upload the video to my YouTube account, but you got to you just go on YouTube and check it out. Uh, I don't remember the name. Just put BBC uses video game footage in the search, and I'm sure it'll pop right up. Um, ITV was doing this report. Uh, I think it was the 26th, so like four days ago, they aired this episode, six-part epi six part special, rather, about Gaddafi and how he's a bad guy and all this other crap. Of course, you know, trying to propaganda, push it into people's heads, justify $2.7 billion. You heard me correctly, $2.7 billion. That's just the UK's take. That's just, their, that's just what they spent. In Libya so far in the past six, seven months, 2.7 billion. So now they have to justify to the slaves why they're raping them for 2.7 billion. So they're playing the Gaddafi stuff mm -hmm. and they're trying to connect Gaddafi to the IRA and the IRA attack on a helicopter of some sort. So they show what, what they claim to be eight millimeter footage from the IRA and it's from a video game. And the guy on YouTube <laughs> shows shows that he shows the clip where they're playing that it's it's you know oh we're being you know this is their eight millimeter footage from the ira itself and blah 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 and this is they use it as a training video and all this other propaganda crap okay and then you get he goes through that and then he shows you from the video game the whole clip that they took uh, two sections of and edited them together to make this little quote-unquote eight millimeter film but he shows you, and you see it's a video game, and you're like, oh, my God. I mean, that's how lazy they are, Jim. To, they've, you know, they, first they report Building 7 falling. And you know, arrogant. Yeah, but, well, completely. They, they report Building 7 falling before it's supposed to go down, or before right. it did go down, rather. Right. Then, you know, in the years since, the BBC constantly gets caught. And I don't know if it's it's because they're British and they they have that British height of arrogance, or maybe and I'm not saying all Brits are arrogant, but they have that they try to put off that aura of I'm a you know we're arrogant Brits, or if they're just arrogant in general, or if it's because they're the media, or it, it, because maybe they they think we're that stupid. But they literally constantly pull this crap, and then they do things like again on nine since nine eleven, okay, or since before right before you know maybe six months before nine eleven. They have done, as far as I know, one, two, and now they've interviewed you about it. And I know they interviewed you one other time, too, previous. Before, yeah, yeah. Not, only, yeah, yeah. not only video, but another audio interview. So that's four interviews, three, <clears throat> four specials touching on 9-11. And that we'll say in the past, at least that I know of, in the past mm, six months. And three of them, they keep calling you. 
and this whole thing with the interview, and I'll I'll play you know what we'll, we're going to play yeah. clips from it next yeah. hour, and then Jim yeah. and I can tear it apart. But you can hear. I mean, you it was a setup. It was a complete and total setup with you. They jumped all over you. And it was it, they they had three guests that obviously are going to tow the party line and laugh and giggle. And by the way, when people laugh and giggle, that's a Pavlovian response. I don't get mad. I feel sorry for people like that because they're that brain dead. Because Pavlov's dogs were taught that if you rang a bell, you know, they would it, it ended up that they would drool every time Pavlov rang the bell because he used to feed them when he would ring a bell. And it got to the point where they, he rang the bell and their brain automatically correlated the bell with food and they started to salivate. So well, that's what they've done to the populace. Okay. And they, they've done it with many different objects and items. And that's why there's marketing and that's why there's TV programming. They're not called, you, you, you might call it a TV show, but in the industry, it's called programming. And, you know, they don't consider themselves to be entertainers. They, they call themselves culture creators. Think about that for a second. They call themselves culture creators. Do you realize what they're saying? That they create the culture. Duh. People are going to be, well, Pop, I, of course they do. They're the music. Um, what, what, huh? Of course they do. They're the, they're the music industry. They're musicians. They're entertainers. They don't create the culture. They're supposed to mimic real life. They're supposed to emulate us and want to be us. It's not supposed to be the other way around. Things have gotten completely, you know, twisted. And white is black and black is white. Right, Jim? Yeah. I'm sorry to say we're in an Orwellian era, no doubt about it. With all the years that you've, uh, you know, researched I, I guess you could say in the conspiracy realm. Do you see, like, your personal opinion? Uh, what do you think of this mass awakening that's going on? Does it give you, like, hope that, and faith that we, we are going to beat this? Because I know, I mean, that's how I feel. Sure. I, I see people waking up every day. But from your opinion, you've been in the game a long, long time. I mean, back when you started and you started researching stuff, barely anybody was awake, correct? Well, there's a lot to that. Popeye. I mean, I began doing, you know, really serious scientific research on JFK in 1992, collaborating with some of the best qualified individuals to ever study the case, including a world authority on the human brain who was also an expert on wound ballistics and a PhD in physics who was also uh, an MD and board certified in radiation oncology, which is a treatment of cancer using x-ray therapy. So he was an expert on the interpretation of x-rays and and, and several others, too. And, you know, we began taking apart the cover-up of JFK, discovered the autopsy x-rays had been altered to conceal this massive blowout to the back of the head, another to implant a 6.5 metallic slice to implicate this obscure World War II weapon that was going to be used to frame Oswald, uh, uh, that the Zapruder film had been massively edited to conceal, for example, the limo stop when the driver brought the presidential limousine to a halt to make sure Jack would be killed, during which he was shot twice in the head. Once from behind, he fell forward. Jack eased him up, was looking him right in the face when he was hit in the right temple with a frangible or exploding bullet that blew his brains up to the left rear with such force that they hit a motorcycle patrolman named Bobby Hargis, who thought he himself had been shot. But we didn't have, you know, the, the, the Internet wasn't as big. I mean, look, I think the Internet's making a huge difference, Popeye, in, in programs like this. You know, the alternative media, I, I think there's very little respect left, at least among the younger generation, for, for traditional media. I mean, the newspapers and television networks just aren't cutting it. So if you want to learn what's going on in the world, you have to get on the Internet. You have to be... Selective, you know, have you get around and compare different sources to figure out what's going on? But a lot of people are doing it, and I do think you're right that an awful lot of people are waking up that we were scammed on 9 11, that it was an inside job, that it was a staged event in order to promote a political agenda involving oil, Israel, and ideology. Yeah, people need to wake up. I mean, and when I say wake up, even people that know 9-11 was an inside job, they need to kind of wake up too because I'm tired of hearing people. People like to assume that it that for some reason it's got to always be very – even in the truth movement, it's got to be very uh, easy and simple. You know, the, the, it's got to – people can't 
you know, there's a lot of people that can't comprehend how vast 9-11 had to have been to put to be pulled off because it was it, it was obviously something that wasn't planned over the course of six months or even a year. Oh, I mean, this thing right. had you're to have been planned right. over yeah. years. Yeah. I mean, it, there was there had to be foundation work laid so that this stuff would even work to begin with. So this plot has to go back a long time. And I'm not saying in 50 years or any that crap, but it, I would say at least five well, to no. 10 years in the making. At, I well, mean, I and I'm serious I when I say that. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable estimate. I mean, the, the, the idea of creating a war on terror that was going to be involved in what Joshua Blakeney has referred to as the lukenitization of the you know Middle East or worldview about the Middle East. I mean... Benjamin Netanyahu published a collection of essays in 1986 entitled Terrorism, How the West Can Win, in which he was basically laying out the idea of, you know, the conversion of the Middle East into a bunch of little statelets instead of these larger Arab states so that there would be no, uh, no political force that could compete with Israel's domination of the Middle East. I mean, that's really what's been going on here. And some of this other stuff seems to be opportunistic. I mean, the attack on Libya just stuns me. I, it doesn't make any sense at all. The Libyan people were very, very well off. They had the highest standard of living in Africa. Gaddafi was sharing oil revenues with them, sending them to college, national health care. Not anymore. That we don't have. Not anymore. That's gone. Interesting, you know what the first two things that the rebels created while they were still fighting Gaddafi? Well, the first was a central bank. Yeah, a central bank and then an oil company. Yeah, but no, that's pretty bizarre. We're not it's there not, for the gold or for the oil, no. Well, Papa, my impression, just is, yeah, my impression is a lot of the statements made about, you know, the victory by the rebels are exaggerations and propaganda and that fierce fighting is going on and it's not obvious that NATO is going to be able to defeat them. Oh, they have to. They're forced to admit now, Jim, that they're that the rebels are getting their rear ends handed to them. One of their top commanders, their field commander, he just got blown up yesterday by a, well, one of Qaddafi's I don't, I don't rockets. Think NATO, NATO, NATO has no business being there, and uh, uh, I have, I, I, is, it's it's disgusting that we're even there. I have no. It's disgusting I, that I, we're there. I, I don't feel bad when any of these rebel Al Qaeda scumbags yeah, get killed either. I, you know, rebel. the innocent, maybe the innocent young kids of Libya that get swept up, but not the Al Qaeda morons. I, I don't feel bad for them anyway. We're going to break. Stay tuned. We got another hour with Jim Fetzer. We'll be right back. We are back for hour number two. It is Friday, September 30th, 2011. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com, and I'm hanging out with my good buddy, Professor Jim Fetzer. Jim, somebody asked that, in the chat. Somebody asked a question really quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go I ahead. Was go ahead, go say, ahead. Did you notice how the BBC, you know, referred to the others as professor, professor? She knew I was a retired professor, but she referred to me as an author and the founder of Scholars for Nightly Truth. She never mentioned, yeah, she you know. The, 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 it didn't bother to mention that you were a college professor. Don't bother to mention yeah, that at all. Yeah, well, I was okay. I think that was part of the way they were arranging it, you know, to, to align the forces. Who are going to debunk 9/11 truth? And I was the well. It's like it's the little subtleties that they do. It's it's like taking not it's not so much taking swipes at you, but it's they're building up the other people, whereas yeah. they're starting you off on a lower level. You know, or yeah. they're, they're trying to. That's what that's the, right. the message they're trying to convey through the way they speak. Right. And because it was radio, she had she has to use descriptive words because it's not video. So right. they, they can't like flash a picture of you with like a if like your hair was at, you know, sometimes they find bad pictures of people online and stuff and they use them. <laughs> they can't do that. So she had to use descriptive words for you and everything else was yeah. professor, professor and then, yeah. oh, this crazy can conspiracy nut that wrote some books <laughs> well this guy richard who was trying his best you know to debunk me without any success at all because he had no well, she only introduced him as a blogger in new york i know <laughs> wasn't that strange did that strike you as strange 
they're looking at you like you're some moron, but at the same token, they're like, well, blogger from New York. They, they didn't. I don't even think. I, I don't even recall if she mentioned his website. She might have, but I don't. I don't remember hearing it. I don't it. think so. And, and, and she tried going to him the first time. He wasn't even there. And yes. then they bring him in, and it was just some some quote unquote blogger from New York. You know, yeah. that's you know. Blah, 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 blah. Jim you Fetcher's had a question. Crazy. You had a question from the chat, chat room you wanted to squeeze in edgewise? Oh, yeah. You know what? I have to – let me uh, scroll back up here. They asked uh, – it, it was fresh in my head, but, you know, <laughs> I my know, brain – I caught you. I took you off track. Apart. No, that's okay. Oh, they wanted to know what um, – was it on? It wasn't on TV. It was on radio. What was the name of the uh, the radio show that you were on so they can go back and listen to it? The whole th- well, I mean, you guys can listen well, to the whole thing. I said it, I'm going to upload it to uh, YouTube, but they wanted to know what the name of the radio was anyway. The name of well, the, it was the a program. BBC. It was a BBC worldwide conversational program. I think the program usually runs a couple hours, but they only had me featured during the first segment, the first half hour. But it's something. It may be part of the BBC World Service uh, because they had a member also who interviewed me, Max Pearson had interviewed me before, and so far as I can tell, they killed that interview. He claimed it was broadcast, but when I wrote him and asked him for links to where I could find it, he, he was non-responsive. I think he was just of course, you know, trying to pacify me so I would realize, which I already had realized, that they hadn't broadcast it. Well, you're the, I, you know, you're the, you're, what'd you call yourself? You said they look at you like uh, you're the uh, the nutty professor. Well, that was the way they tried to cast us in those two conspiracy files. Yeah, they, pieces, they, they try know? to make you like the kooky Dylan, Dylan, bag. Dylan, Dylan's the obnoxious kid, and, and Alex Jones is the, the messianic professor, I mean, uh, preacher, and I'm the kooky professor. I mean, that's the stereotype they're trying to play. I don't think they're quite able to pull it off, but that's pretty clear that that's what they're trading in, they're trying to you know, force things. And they try it. to act like they're, they're not going in with an agenda, but when you go in and you're already trying to label the person you're interviewing in a certain box, and that's, you know, or, or put them in a box, I should say, or label them a certain way and, and shed a certain, ca- only cast a certain light on them, that's not being objective. Yeah, you know. Well, I, I mean, know let the they, interview I, speak for itself. You know, if you came out as a, <laughs> a, a screwball, then then fine. Fetzer comes out as a screwball. Popeye, I know how you know, they could. I know, I know how they could find it. With, but the hostess name is Philippa Phillips. P H I L I P P A. Philippa uh, Thomas. Philippa Thomas. I think if they do a search on Philippa Thomas, BBC, probably BBC World Service. I'll bet they're going to be able to track it. Because I listen, well, like Bob, I said, I'd I'll put it up know. on YouTube. So I'd love to know what happened after I got off. You know, but well, that would be oh, very. I'm sure they probably had, but yeah, you know, I we only have I only have what uh, Jim's only got until he got cut off by the BBC. The first but, thirty. Minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, the first thirty minutes, and I will put the first uh, thirty minutes up on YouTube. I, you guys just got to give me a chance. I I do everything yeah, myself. Anyway. I don't I don't have a crew like all these other people do, but I I still manage to make a. <laughs> A, a website that looks like I do, and I run, you know, I do all my own video editing and graphics and everything else. So it, it takes me, might take me. I'll, I'll probably have it rendered tonight. Uh, I'll just, you know, I'll throw something together really quick and I'll get it up. Oh, that's I, actually, good. it doesn't matter. You know, I, I, I take that back. I, it doesn't matter. It's not going to get uploaded until at least like six o'clock in the morning, because it'll be. I'll put it in the queue. The reason being is I'm uploading a full length movie for. Um, a filmmaker friend of mine named Ben Stewart. He just came out with his third movie. He's the guy that I don't know if you've ever seen Esoteric Agenda or Chimatica, but uh, he his third movie, Ungrip, is coming out. And uh, I told him I would uh, upload it to YouTube for him in full length. So that's going to, it's taking forever thanks to YouTube. But I'll have it up within, we'll say, the next like 24 hours, it'll be up. And you'll be able to hear Jim's show. Uh, and it's, or uh, you'll be able, I should rephrase that. You'll be able to hear the BBC interview with Jim on it. Only up till they cut him off. So if anybody can find the full one, uh, email me at info at federaljack.com and let me know because I would love to hear if they had anything nasty to say about you after they got off the air. Because usually yeah, they yeah, take which, the final swipes at people when they're gone. So yeah, I can only really imagine. I, 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 you- I've just done a search on Philippa Thomas, and, and I'm right about all those things about BBC World Service Radio and Philippa Thomas. I'll bet you're going to be some someone there in the chat room is going to be track be able to track this down. Remember, it was from yesterday, so if today's the thirtieth, it was from the 29th of September. Yeah. Thursday the, the 29th. 
Yeah, and the broadcast time, as I recall, was around noon our time. So it would have been 6, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, I'd say. It was around 6 p.m. in the U.K. If you guys can find, if anybody can find uh, the full interview, I would love to hear. Yeah, go for BBC say. World yeah. Service, uh, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time in the U.K., and Philippa Thomas, and you're going to have it. I'll bet you're going to find it for the 29th of September. Yeah, you know, I would look, but guys, honestly, I'm 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 super slammed. Oh, you got too many uh, things going on. Yeah. yeah, if you guys get and I got and, and you know, we got to uh, occupy Miami or occupy Wall Street is spreading to Miami, and uh, you know it's spreading all over the, the country. Is- so tomorrow they're going to be uh- coming down. Well, they're going to there's going to be people from here massing uh, down at uh, Bayfront Park in Miami. So I'm going to go down and. Uh, cover it, try to get some interviews, uh, as well as I'm going to be giving out. I, I burned 800 movies in anticipation for this. Um, and I'm bringing, there, well, eight different movies, but 800 copies, so 100 copies of each movie. And I'm bringing uh, about 50 of each with me, some 9 11 Truth, some other stuff, stuff well, about JFK. Good, that's real good. Well, you know, some of these people are, you know, a lot of them might not be awake to everything. And, th- you know, this is what I we did, you know, with the end the Fed rallies and the the Ron Paul stuff. And we woke up a lot of the, the local Ron Paul groups to 9-11 and stuff down here years ago. So that's what we're going to try to get on top of it tomorrow. Or yeah, I should say me. My, my wife and I are going to be doing it. My, <laughs> my wife, my, my partner in crime tomorrow, she's going to come down and do some of the camera work and some other stuff for me because I need a, an extra set of hands. So it's great. Yeah, it, it's spreading. But anyway, if anybody can get, um, uh, I'll throw up the the interview. In fact, actually, you know what? Uh, I'll wait. Uh, I'll I'll give it like two or three days. If somebody can find the the full interview, the rest of the show, I don't really need you, you know the rest of the geopolitical crap. Unless actually, if you guys listen to it, if they take swipes, you know, minutes in or you know twenty minutes later, if they start taking swipes at Jim again, then yeah, let me know in the when you send it to me in the email and. I'll make sure I go through the whole thing. But if you guys can find that end clip for me, I'll wait. And if you can send it to me, that way I can put in after you hear Jim and everything, then I can mm-hmm. fade it out and have you know some text come up and say, okay, now after Jim was on, listen to what they had to say, and you know I could play that. That yeah. would be fine. So I'll wait to throw the show up. You know, I know you guys want to hear it, but I'll wait to throw the show up. If you guys can find the whole thing, you'll have the whole interview anyway. You'll be helping me out. So play some clips. Do me a favor. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to play some clips from the interview when we come back. We're going to break. Perfect. perfect so, guys, perfect. stay tuned. Three minutes. Me and Jim will be right back, and I'll play some clips from the BBC. Uh, we'll say attack lies. on Fetzer. It was, it was well, a... That was an inside job too, right, Jim? We'll bring it back. That was an inside job. They lie, they scam, they cheat, and steal. They plot, they fun, they act, it's real. We're back, guys. Anybody interested in uh, helping me out, you know, fight the New World Order, helping uh, perhaps maybe, uh, you know, helping with Federal Jack? I I don't mean, you know, I I would ask you guys to, like, fly here and do stuff. I mean, like, if you guys want to submit articles or whatever um, or, you know, be like an author or whatever. um, um, there, I have a, a a couple openings, a few. I don't have that many, but if anybody's interested, email me at info at federaljack dot com, info at federaljack dot com, and uh, you know if you have a specialty or you're good at something, include that because you know that'll you know if you're good at like Flash or uh, if you're good at making graphics or whatever or video or whatever we can we we all need to kind of create a one massive cohesive unit that works together and we don't need any any one head nobody has to be in charge but we can all kind of we can all if you have a website we can all work together and promote each other we do this with the the intel hub and and other sites we all have to kind of work together so if anybody's interested in kind of becoming part of this larger group you know with like me the intel hub bobtuscan.com other websites and all kind of working together and backing one another um hit me up info at federaljack.com if you guys want to maybe uh 
if you feel like, you know, hey, I, you know, Popeye, I've been a listener for a while. Uh, you know, I'd like to make you an intro or something or what they call a vanity card. That's how I actually got my first vanity card. Never had one. And uh, I used to just do fade ins and fade outs of, uh, you know, uh, text and somebody emailed me and say, Hey man, I made you a, uh, an intro. I, I, I think your website's great. And this is way before I even had a radio show. And uh, they were like, I, I love your YouTube channel. I love, uh, your website and I made you, uh, an intro. And that's how the one that you guys normally see all the time where with the explosion and it looks like fire and it says federal Jack. And then you hear the, the action of the gun go, shh, shh, what that was actually made by, uh, a listener, you know? So, uh, if anybody wants to help out, uh, you know, hit me up. And uh, if if you make a, a cool intro and I end up using it in my videos and stuff, uh, I'll send you some free DVDs, whatever I whatever copies of whatever I happen to have laying around. Um, somebody in the chat room, by the way, I, I I didn't get a chance to see who it was, but I saw that they threw it up. Uh, the link to uh, Philippa Thomas is. Uh, I think it's a WordPress blog or whatever it was. So um, it, it might that might lead you to the interview with Jim. I'm sure you probably have to go through BBC itself too. You might want to try BBC. What did you say it was BBC World? Is that where it was, Jim? BBC World or uh, BBC One or whatever? Was there a certain channel it was on? Because I know they have a couple of different versions over there. Uh oh. I think we lost Jim. Let me see if uh, I can get him back on here. I didn't even realize that we uh, had lost Mr. Fetzer. I should say Professor Fetzer. Let me see if we got him back. Hopefully they didn't drop a JDAM on his house or something. Take poor Fetzer out. That would suck. But uh, yeah, you, I'll get the interview up. If you guys, I'll wait a couple of days if you guys can email me that. If by like Sunday I don't have it, I'll throw the whole interview up. It's just a 30 minute interview. But you can hear that uh, they uh, they totally hosed them. I mean, they, we, if it wasn't him, they probably would have brought somebody else in. But I think they just keep Jim on speed dial over at the BBC, and they they pretty much just you know they have the three guys pretty much reading from the script. Of course, it was you know it was Bin Laden, you know it was the nine eleven, you know the nineteen hijackers, and it couldn't be anybody else. And these are crazy conspiracy theories. And Ahmadinejad is a nut. In fact. One of the things they got on, they talked about, was they were talking about Ahmadinejad and how Al Qaeda came out in, I think it was Inspire magazine, and they said, uh, "Stop being a conspiracy theorist. You know, don't be a, a moron, Ahmadinejad. You know, blah blah blah. Stop feeding it. You know, we did it." And it reminded me of this uh, this clip from The Onion that they had back in I found it on YouTube it's from 2008 and I swear to god I'm going to play this it's like a 2 minute clip and uh Jim's back with us by the way guys but I'm going to I'm going to play this this 2 minute clip uh so everybody can hear it and now think you can go back and uh, I'll find the link for the ABC article but uh, think about this they said that they they want you know Al Qaeda wants uh, Ahmadinejad to stop saying 911 was an inside job right it Got to stop saying 9-11 was an inside job. Now, I'm going to play the Onion clip, and I, I want you to go oh. read the ABC article afterwards, and it's like they took hey, the I'm back right at that. Yeah. All right. Jim, I'm going, to play the, I'm going to play the Onion clip that I, I told you about. I'm going to play it for the listeners. Here, guys, listen. Go ahead. Yeah, out. do it. That's great. The construction of the World Trade Center was not the work of terrorists, but was, in fact, perpetrated by the U.S. government. With us, the much maligned books author, William Gerard. Most of the mainstream media, they're just too afraid to even have me on, so thank you. Also joining us is Omar Al-Farouk of Al-Qaeda. He's an outspoken critic of what he calls Gerard's 9-11 conspiracy theories. Yes, Michael, uh, I assure you, that is all this book is, is complete nonsense. Hey, Mr. Gerard, how did you arrive at the conclusions in your book? W where are the facts? Well, through here? scientific examination of ground zero. For example, the melted core. I mean, that oh, was definitely we go. evidence that there were thermite bombs that were used in bringing down those buildings. I can assure you, we did not use thermite bombs. I did the research myself. It would not have worked. We flew an enormous airplane into a building. Okay, I think it is obvious what caused the building to crumble. Why it are you is... being so close-minded to this, sir? If most How people would you like the it? you spent you know, two months in a, a mountain cave, uh, sleeping on rocks, planning something really special, 
it, only to have someone take the credit away from you. Say, oh, no, you don't the deserve the credit for open it. Open up their it's minds. Mr. Gerard, it's true. Mr. Gerard, why in the world would the U.S. government want to stage this attack on their own soil? Greed, of course. And to increase the oil revenues, the weapons industry, and security industry. And these are all things that Bush and uh, puppet master Cheney, they've got their stakes in. Bush's administration, there are a den of jackals. We, we there certainly have common ground there. But, but what does not follow is why would they kill, follow. Why would they kill 3,000 of their own infidels? Well, of course, because why, think about why it. It was all part of their plan to build a case for the war in Iraq. So think about plan all of this. Why is his approval rating, you know, in El Haman? And why is Osama bin Laden safe in... Somewhere. Yes, the Iraq war has done serious damage to the Bush uh, administration. Here, here, look, look. I have uh, names, phone numbers, everyone involved in this. Gotta be kidding. Okay? Names and phone numbers. I, I have here the the voucher for the lessons, for the flight lessons. This is for obviously for his documents. And come on, did President Bush give you these himself? I this is, this Bush? is Most Me and Bush, we go out, we hang. He goes, hey, 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 on the poetry. Sure, this is rubbish. Talking to you is like talking to a girl. This is the kind of thing our government does. I mean, Let Mr. Farouk of Al-Qaeda speak. I have a suggestion for you. Why don't you go to the Washington yeah. Monument? Take the family. Let's say October 12, uh, 2009, uh, around 3.04. Uh, take a guided tour to the top and uh, just wait there. I, I think you will see that Al-Qaeda uh, is very good at, at organizing things. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you. Coming up when we come back, the... All right, so you can see, obviously, they tried to make light and humor. But I I if you listen to the way the, the Al-Qaeda guy was, oh, come on, we flew a large plane. I, I mean, it's... it's it Now, this, by the way was, uh, I know The Onion's satirical, but it was kind of uh, almost, uh, I, I, it, it's a clip that does piss me off when I watch it, because the guy that they have made up is kind of a, a cross between Jim, David Ray Griffin, and then uh, the younger generation of truthers, because he's a younger guy, he's got like a beard with a goat, you know, the whole full beard with the goatee attached and everything, but um, he's in uh, the, the same kind of like suit and button up shirt and everything that like but in the sports jacket I should say but like the same like light colored sports jackets that you would wear uh, and and the same kind of shirts with the, with the, it's kind of got like a flat rectangular collar which David Ray Griffin wears so it's kind of like any Ray he's a book author so it's an attack on all these guys especially like the scholars for 9/11 truth and everything but the absurdity of the, you know, Al-Qaeda saying, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what this reminded me of. That's what Ahmadinejad getting yelled at by Al-Qaeda reminded me of. So I wanted to play it. We're going to break. back guys i'm going to play a clip from jim's interview because i've been saying i was going to do it and, and jim's <laughs> on time time just flies by especially when we're making fun of the people that make fun of us we like to sit back and point fingers and laugh at them but bes that's besides the point anyway um i want to play a clip now this is right when they tried bringing this guy up uh earlier the guy from New York, the, the unknown blogger from New York. Uh, and he, he uh, I guess the, the phone line w cut off or whatever. So they got him finally back up. And they went back to, when he wasn't there, they went back to the, the other two guys. And then they went back to Jim. And by the time Jim was done pontificating, they had this little moron all queued up. And that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a, a couple minutes just so you guys can hear how smarmy this little prick is. I mean, obviously, if I, if I or most people I know were locked in a room with him, he wouldn't have any teeth. But it's just I mean, you could just tell that this guy's a smarmy little prick. We'll come to Jesse in New York soon. I feel, Jesse, you may have a, an alternative point of view. But, but I know that um, Professor Nazir has to go uh, very soon. Professor Nazir in Boston, um, you've talked about al-Qaeda worrying about decline. Um, and I think, in fact, we have lost your line now. So we're going to go to New York. Uh, Jesse, you blog on foreign policy. What do you make of what you've heard? Um, I, I sort of don't even feel like responding to the gentleman from Wisconsin because his crackpot theories are so bizarre that I would sooner listen to Scarlett Johansson talk about biology or something. What I'd like to talk about is focus on the serious issues um, that are actually going on in the Middle East and, and agree that there's a sort of panic 
among uh, Irani forces and in Al Qaeda forces that both of their uh, ways of thinking um, have been rendered obsolete by the so called Arab awakening. Um, and so, in order to take the um, spotlight and, and uh, take it away from the, the movement toward democracy and secular pluralism in the Middle East and, and put it on an old, familiar, friendly enemy like the United States, um, I think they're both hoping. Uh, will, will help uh, increase their esteem among the, the people of that region. Philippa, Jesse is either very ignorant or he's pretending not to know better because we have all kinds of proof that the Twin Towers, for example, could not possibly have collapsed. The fires were very modest. They didn't burn long enough or hot enough to cause the steel to weaken, much less melt. The buildings were constructed with a safety factor of 20, which meant every floor could support 20 times the number of floors it would be expected to support even during full occupancy. And if the fires had actually burned long enough and hot enough, they would have caused some gradual sagging and tilting of the floors, not the complete, total, and abrupt collapse that took place. I'm sorry to say that Jesse is here to obfuscate what we have well established based upon objective scientific research, including engineers... I had to pause it for a second. That's a prime example of Jim Fetzer verbally ripping someone a new ass on air. I'm going to go back. I just think it's awesome because he's a smarmy little prick. You see how I don't even think I should respond to the person in the person in Wisconsin or the man in Wisconsin. Whatever the hell he called you. How about Professor Fetzer? How about that, you smarmy little bastard? <laughs> Pilots, physicists, and other experts who have been members of scholars. Again, I reiterate. Go to 20 reasons the official account of 9-11 is wrong. Uh, Jesse, I dare say, would un be unable to refute any of those. Yes, all right. That, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you believe that, and you and David Ray Griffin can have your wonderful party and put your tinfoil hats on. But there are also actually really important things going on in the Middle East right now, like how about the fact that um, inter-ethnic tensions between Arabs and Irani are going to bubble over in Iraq? really soon, where we've got 40,000 troops stationed in an occupation that should never have happened. How about that? Is that interesting to you, or is it not conspiratorial? Enough? The problem, Jesse, is that the whole invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan was predicated on a false theory, namely that the United States was attacked by... A now, wait a minute. I wanna, I'm going to show you an example. Do you see what Jesse just did there? That's called a straw man argument. What he did was he couldn't refute Jim's argument of you can go to my site or scholars for 9-11 truth or whatever, you know, you pretty much any most 9-11 truth sites, okay, that are that, it was you know, veterans today in this stuff. case, yeah well, okay, veterans today you, and you could go to there and you can see the, the, what he's talking about there's plenty of evidence, you know there's more than enough evidence out there this guy obviously knows it, Jim called him on his BS, and his only it was a ad hominem slash straw man argument what he did was he created a straw man argument and started it off with an ad hominem attack is what i should say first he called you and david ray griffin tinfoil hat wearers okay right. so that automatically he's trying to degrade you again now and anybody who understands logical arguments understands that you should never use ad hominem attacks ever okay and when someone does it's because they lack any real argument to begin with and then he creates the straw man argument of Jim, are you not concerned about the invasion of Iraq and the illegal occupation of another country? Well, of course Jim is concerned about it. What he's trying to explain to you is that 9-11, because it was used as justification for such crap, okay, was an inside job purposely to get people in the mindset that they would back such an event. But this jerk-off doesn't touch on that. He creates the straw man that Jim doesn't care about Iraq and all that, which – he can easily defeat because he's created this argument for that exact purpose. That is the essence of a straw man argument. So you just heard on air, you just heard the prime example of an ad hominem attack leading into a straw man argument because he can't refute Jim. Because he knows if he goes to Jim's site, if he goes to Veterans Today, if he goes to Scholars for 9-11 Truth, this guy, this little jerk-off blogger, knows that if he does even five to ten minutes of investigating, he will see it. Okay? And he will see the truth. And he'll see there's oodles of evidence. But his job, his sole job, was to go on and make Jim look like a jerk-off. And instead, Jim handed his ass to him 
on air, very politely, I may add. I, I, I would have had to have bitten my tongue. I, I, you know, for, for purposes of putting, you know, Sparky in his place, I, I, I probably would have, uh, uh, I, I probably would have bitten my tongue like you did. But I, I gotta say, Jim, you really, I mean, they didn't re- once recognize you as Professor Fetzer. And look, I'm your friend. I, I could call you Jim and introduce you as Jim, and I still mention you that you're a professor, and I try to bring it up because it's res- I'm respectful of what you've accomplished, and here they are treating you like you know, you know they can just crap on you because you say 9/11 was an inside job, and it, it just goes to show you the level that Jim's at compared to them, and I'm not I'm not you know blowing smoke up Jim's rear end or anything, but it goes to show you here's. They try to say that 9-11 truthers or, or people that you know believe in 9-11 truth are crazy, and yet Jim sat there and was able to politely refute this guy with facts, and he didn't respond to the ad hominem attacks, which is what he wanted. That's what that's for. That's to get you angry so that you're like, don't call me that because, bam, it just brought you off topic. Now you're not talking about what you were just talking about. It derailed you, and no matter what, even if you get back on topic, your listeners are derailed. That's what it's for. It's not only to derail the the person speaking. It's to derail the listeners because they know that sometimes pe- people, pe- the people listening might not have the same attention span as the person talking. It's all – it's all logical fallacies, and see, they understand this. They know what they're doing, okay? It's not like they don't know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, so you have to know their game too, okay? It's knowing about the trivium. It's knowing it's knowing logical fallacies. This is stuff – I'm still learning this stuff myself, but I got to tell you, once I, I really started to study logical fallacies, Jim, that's when I really started to be able to pick out – Holy crap, because now somebody gives me an argument and I tear it apart like I just did. How you, like I just tore this, this little jerk off's argument and how he treated you. Okay, I, I can tear someone's entire argument apart and understand, oh my God, you know, I see things, I understand the puzzle better, I, understand, I see the pieces for what they are. It's the only way that we're going to be able to get past this. And that's why they're dumbing everybody down. You know? That's why they're trying to make everybody stupid because they don't want people to be able to think like this. They don't want anybody to have any, you know, any thought outside the box at all. As far you know, that, that's what I can see. Uh, maybe, you know, we got about a minute before we go into break. But when you were a professor, let me ask you this really quick. When you were a professor, did you notice that kids were stupider? Or, you know, you're going to have to answer that on the other side of the break, Jim. But uh, I'll let you ponder that during the break. Were, 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 did you notice that kids were perhaps any dumber at all? You know, when you were trying to teach him, maybe, you know, then earlier, maybe years before. We're going to break, guys. We'll be right back. It's all the same. Are you a devil or an angel? And I say, Bush was telling us, don't believe me or Cheney. Don't believe our outrageous conspiracy theories that 19 guys with... No training uh, to fly passenger jets could fly passenger jets in a manner that defies physics and should have torn the passenger jets to pieces. But that's even another subject unto itself. Um, And when I say that, it's because the the jets were flying too fast, too low. Uh, uh, Pilots for 9-11 Truth has shown that that and these are professional pilots, some of them over 30 years have shown that that's physically impossible. So they would have had to have been military jets regular passenger liners were not built for that so they had to have been something else if, that was made if, to look like something else if they weren't all so, phantom uh, flights yeah if they weren't all just phantom flights uh, Popeye actually it, you know it's it, it, I, I have a feeling it, it's going to probably take another 20 years even if tomorrow the truth about 9-11 came out and they admitted that it was an inside job and we actually started to get some uh some sort of a real investigation into it. I I don't think we'd be able to uncover the entire plot, you know, every aspect of it, uh, it, it very fast. Uh, first of all, I don't think everything, you know, 100% would always come to light. There's always going to be some stuff that's hidden, but I don't think that, I think it would take like 20 years to, to, to uncover everything just because there's so many, that there's so many people that are, have died, 
you know, it's like the Kennedy assassination. And you got to go back and, tr- you know, you go back and your 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 lead ends at a, at a dead body or a, a quote unquote dead witness or whatever. It sucks. So then you have to go back and try to reconstruct what you can being an investigator, you know, from what you know up until that person's death. You know, well, it was Barry Jennings, prime example. You know, gr- good thing Dylan Avery and Jason Burmis and Corey Rowe interviewed him. A real good thing. Because if can you imagine if he never got interviewed and they took him out? They wouldn't have any... It, it, they have to admit... Did you see, by the way... Because we only have... This is the last segment. We only have a few minutes. Did you see that they came out with a, an, a new explanation about three or four days? Maybe it was like a week ago now. About explosions in the World Trade Center? Remember how there were never any explosions, Jim? Okay. Well, now... Now the explosions in the World Trade Center... Okay... Now they occurred because of hot aluminum uh, being introduced to the cold water of the sprinkler system. And the um, connection of the two between the hot water hitting the uh, – or, or excuse me, the, the – the, you know, I don't want to say cold, cold water, but the, the, the water – Hitting the um, the aluminum, the reaction between the two uh, was explosive, and it, that's what turned everything to dust and and blew everything up and created all that mist. So now they have to admit that there's explosions, but they're not going to say it came from explosive, uh, you know, high explosives planted in the building. They're going to say that it came from a a reaction of hot water and uh, molten aluminum. Just completely, completely ridiculous. Um, sorry about this, guys, but we lost Jim. Jim seems to have lost his internet connection. Uh, so not a big deal. It happens sometimes. I, I don't think the Illuminati got him. I just think his internet connection probably died. Not a, a biggie. If I can bring him back in before the end of the show, I'll bring him back. But um, I will have uh, the uh, – uh, I was talking to Jim during the break. What I'll do is uh, – the video, the interview with him, I will take it and I will upload the – as soon as Ben Stewart's movie is finished uploading, I will upload the – I'll make a quick video and upload it. And then if somebody sends me the other thing, I'll make a little addendum clip for it just so you guys can hear the interview and hear this smarmy little bastard. But uh, also this weekend, before I forget to tell you guys, we got a couple people down in uh, New York – you know, some, to do some on the street and you know on the spot reporting, so we can you know you know from our own people find out what's going on, get a feel for the atmosphere down there on Wall Street. So Sunday I'll be hosting JJ show, and then I'm going to call him, Jules, and um, our friend Darren. Darren's a radio uh, host over on Blog Talk Radio. You guys have heard him on my uh, show before. He was on, in fact, uh, 9/11 with us. <coughs> I'm going to be hosting JJ's show, and then I'm going to host my show. But on, uh, we're going to be call- I'm going to be calling into them during the show and getting uh, updates. Hopefully, maybe we can get some interviews if they can, uh, you know, bump in anybody. Maybe they can interview them, you know, to like a phone interview or whatever. Uh, we'll see. But we're also going to have a um, a video streaming uh, box up on. Um, uh, Orion, it's it's up on the front of the the website. You can just go right to the the main page and see it right there. And you know, whenever they're down there, whenever internet and battery power permits, they're going to do some live streaming video so people can you know uh, you know that way it's not just from one source. We have you know a separate source going down there to show you what's going on. Uh, I'll have some video up on hopefully Sunday or Monday. Uh, from the, the the shoots that I do tomorrow, I'm going to go down and uh, see what's going on at uh, Bayfront Park in Miami. See what the deal is. Like I said, I'm going to bring some DVDs with me, but I'm I'm going I'm going to try to go I'm going to go down and and try to cover it more as press. I mean, I will give out DVDs when I talk to people and stuff, but I want I'm going to try to you know go down and cover it as press so I can get as much footage as possible. But um, I will be, you know, playing the part of activist, but again, I I want to get I want to try to get as much uh, footage and uh, if the 
heavy hand of the law shows up, I would like to be able to get into uh, it, it amongst them, if possible, to get shots from the inside. You know, this, you know who knows? They'd probably, I, I, they'd probably look at me because I'm covered in tattoos and be like, "Yeah, right, mace my face," but whatever. Anyway, make sure you pay attention. We'll have the videos up. Make sure you pay attention. Uh, go to Orion tomorrow and on Sunday the oriontalkradio.com and you can see the video footage when it's coming up uh, again it, some of it might be you know replays of whatever but it'll be whatever they shoot um, and pay attention it's probably going to take I would say another five and a half six hours and it's going to take about another six or seven hours after that to process because YouTube is really dogging it but Ben Stewart's new full movie, Ungrip, Ungrip is the title of it. Full length will be up on my YouTube channel. It's the only place that you guys will be able to see it right now in uh, in uh, full length. And I believe Professor Fetzer is going to be back with us. Let me see if I can get him in. Jim, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 finally, awesome. yeah. Awesome, we got you back for the last couple of minutes. Um what I asked you before when we went to break... I want to say, uh, Pop, I... Yeah. You, met, you uh, before, uh, when, before you went to break, <clears throat> or, or, I was, or what I was asking when we went to break, I should say, when we got cut off, was when you were a professor, did you notice that the, the kids, you know, from when you started went to when you ended, did you notice that the kids were getting progressively stupider when they came out of high school into college? Well, it's, it's like uh, less intellectually developed and i think it's got to do with a couple of factors one is uh the all pervasiveness of television we spend more time watching television than we do reading reading is much better for developing your mind another is the phenomenon of social promotion so that schools have pressure on them from parents to promote kids even if they haven't actually succeeded in mastering the curriculum and what they mean that means is many students come to college who don't really have adequate preparation and need to do remedial work. And so I'm sorry to say, I think that probably as a generalization, it's true, though those who may have been disadvantaged can make up a lot of ground by, you know, getting deeply involved in research like that on 9-11. Go to, go to Veterans Today, for example, check out my articles like uh, the science and politics of 9-11, the Toronto hearings, then for more on the science study, the 20 reasons why the official account of 9-11 is wrong, and for more on the politics peeling the 9-11 onion layers of plots within plots, that'll give you a pretty good handle on the big picture regarding 9-11. Yeah, without a doubt. And Jim spent a lot of time. There's other things you should check out. Jim, uh, the Saddam Hussein thing, really quick. Tell them where they can look out the uh, they can look at the mission accomplished fiasco because that's an interesting story. Where can they oh, find that? Oh, it is. That? Yeah, go, go go to go to nine eleven scholars dot org and scroll down to the mission accomplished fiasco, and you're going to find like uh, twenty different columns and articles and interviews I've done with the mother of the B one bomber who took out Saddam Hussein and his two sons and about sixty members of the general staff about three weeks into the Iraqi invasion. It's really a startling story. Uh, the guy they dug out of the, you know, came out of the hole in the ground was one of his doubles. The man they put on trial was one of his doubles. When Saddam's wife finally visited the man they claimed was Saddam's, they came out saying, where is my husband? Where is my husband? What have you done with him? This is not my husband. It's really a fascinating story. Yeah, it's incredible. Jim, we're out of time. Even two hours isn't enough with you. Thank you so much for coming on, as always. Uh, you know, e even with technical difficulties, it's a pleasure to have you on. <laughs> well, thanks, Popeye. I think you're doing a great job, and I really appreciate it. You're doing a really good work. Well, so are you. Uh, believe me, if it weren't for you, the listeners would never have been able to hear my uh, epic interview with Judith Barry Baker. So thank you. Guys, Super. I'll see you again on Sunday, and I'll be hosting JJ's show. We're going to be around all weekend trying to cover what's going on with the occupation of Wall Street and elsewhere throughout the United States of America. Till then, I'm out.